Hey guys, what's up? So, just picked up a new engine here for my BMT 984, 8-scale on-road, and it's a Pico Auto. So I bought this on eBay, it was 160 bucks, and I don't know a lot about it. I mean, the compression feels great. Um, I mean, I can't even turn this by hand. I mean, that's, that's, that's a good sign if I can't even turn it with my hand. Um, so a few things I do know about this thing so far, like what he had in his description, is that it's obviously an on-road engine, and you can tell that by the size of the head here, the cooling head. Um, plus the autos were kind of, I mean, from what I could read, that they were on-road engines. Definitely a nice looking engine though so far. Um, yeah, the, the Pico website doesn't, it's, there's like no information on it. You can't get manuals. There's basically no information about these engines. Or like, pad, at least with Nova Rossi, you can go to the website and get manuals from my old engine and stuff, but the, no, not with Pico. At least I can't find it, but. So, a very nice high, this is probably the most high, this is probably the best engine I own so far. Uh, my collection's getting bigger. But, um. Okay, so it has a DLC corroded crank. It has ceramic bearings. I don't think the front ceramic. I think the front steel, but they're Swiss-made bearings. Ceramic in the back. Um, but I'm gonna take it apart. We'll take a look at it. So a nine millimeter Venturi in the carburetor. And yeah, it's gonna be nice because right now my the only on true on-road engine I have, nitro engine, is actually this Serpent right here. And um, but I'm actually running like an off-road cooling head on it because. When I bought this engine on eBay, it didn't have the right cooling head. So you can tell it's on road because just because it's made by Serpent. And it's a 21. So, um, you know, Serpent really wasn't known for their off road game. They were mainly like an on road company. You know, their Serpent Vectors and NTs and uh, like the 989s and 9 series. But right now, I currently have an RB, uh, what's it called? An RB uh, C4 in there, which is an Italian made engine too. With the, with the wrong cooling head. Um, which I do actually have the gold head. I'm probably going to put that back on there. But Alright, so there it is. So I'm going to put this engine in here. But you can just see, side by side, I know I'm rambling here. <laughs> Look how much smaller this engine looks. Um, well, just mainly the cooling head. And my theory behind that is that... Uh, because this, 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 these cars are typically traveling a lot faster, uh, they don't need the same size cooling head as the slower moving uh, off-road cars. So, I mean, I could be wrong, but that was my theory on it. Why the cooling head is so much smaller. Um, Alright, so I'm going to get this uh, torn down and we're going to take a look at it internally, see what it looks like. Alright, so I'm going to get the cooling head off first. The one thing I'm actually happy about uh, is they actually uh, went to Allen. So I know like a lot of like the uh, my other Italian, um, my RB concept, uh, one of my other Picos and, and the Nova Rossi's are actually for a long, I don't know if they still do that, but they were, they ran flathead screwdrivers. Yeah, it used to bug me. So, um, okay, so it's not an M3. So, well, maybe I should not see it. It is an M3. It's an M3. Uh, yeah, it is M3. All right. Oh, it's tight. Okay, and there's an Allen wrench here, so in there really tight. Yeah, I think I think that's too tight. I don't think it's supposed to be that tight. Yeah, that's kind of a problem. I mean, you don't want it to be that tight. When I try to do this, I'll strip in the, the screw out. Okay, there we go. So I just grab a little socket and give, give me some more leverage here. So I'm going to take it off in a crisscross pattern too. That's crazy. I don't think it's supposed to be that tight. I mean, maybe it is, but all my other engines have never been that tight. I mean, the new ones are about 450 bucks. So, um... And the compression is great. I mean, I, I'm not a racer. I just, I just do this as a hobby. So, um, right, that's the cooling head. 
Wow, that's a huge, huge uh, head there. And as far as I know, it was a, a turbo plug too. Alright. Um, a couple shims here. Well, actually, that's a pretty big shim. I'm actually glad because I don't know the nitro content. Like, I was reading a, a different version of this auto engine. They want 16% nitro fuel. And, um,. Um, the problem, well, there's actually a lot of oil, so the guy actually ran after it ran oil in there. Um, so that could have been created in the actual compression, you know. But, it feels pretty good. I don't know if you can see it, a light or not. Yeah, because I wanted to uh, pull the sleeve out because I wanted to count the ports. So I knew how many ports this thing actually had, intake ports. Alright, so I'm going to take the back cover off. But so far I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, I think it, it, it's a good deal. Alright, so that is probably a... There we go. Dude, what's up with this guy? Let's torque him down, man. Alright, so DLC coated crank. This is the first engine I have with a DLC coated crank. Um, but it's really like a, it's really, uh, creates a really hard surface. That's why it's called diamond light coating. It's a super, super hard surface. And it requires like crazy special machines to make it happen. Yeah, I was actually looking into it and it's like requires like a really expensive machine to do it. Like you can't do it at home. At least now you can't right now. It's not even feasible. Wow. There we go. Okay, yeah, I can already tell this is a good engine. I um, hope you can see that in the pictures. But it actually already has crank weights. So, that means the, the crankshaft is balanced. But, yeah, look at that. I'm going to pull a crank out right now. But um, I have to get the... Uh, hopefully I can get the sleeve out. Use like a little whole thing here just to get it pushed a little bit if I can. Well, let's see. I might just I might 3D print a tool to get this out of there in the future, getting these sleeves out. And I'll come back. Alright, so if you're wondering how I get the sleeve out like that, you know? So what I use is I mean also you need like some way to crank it down, so I put the Allen screw in there. But then I use like the zip tie. Because you don't want to use anything metal because it's gonna screw up the, the piston in the sleeve. So just enough to kind of get it pushed up a little bit, and then from there I can kind of grab it. Um, there we go. Back off on it. There we go. There we go. Get the piston out of there. Be really careful here. Oh, actually, <laughs> I'm trying to pull out, and you can't even. It's it's. There's actually like if you look at it down there, there's a crank groove. So the the actually like, the connecting rod goes down into a groove. I think my flashlight was there. All right. So the, there's a crank. See that crank groove? Look at that. So I'm gonna have to get it from the top here. Like that. There we go. All right, that's the piston. A little bit of carbon, but I mean we're talking very clean here. So um, I mean that means the guy actually had good filtration. So I mean if I saw like a bunch of brown, and, and I'd be worried about it. But let's get the crank out. Yeah, nice and smooth, man. This guy took good care of his engine, and this was not a cheap engine, so. DLC coated crank, nice and smooth. All this is smooth. That means he actually wasn't sucking in dirt and dust. Um, this, what does it say on the? All right, so it says X type. That's what it says. Yeah, you know this is a high-end crank. Obviously, they spent the extra money to DLC coat it. Um, then you also have the uh, insert too, the silicone insert there, or, or the fill, silicone fill. And then the crank weights. They went out of their I mean they they balanced the crank. 
So the fact that they actually have crank weights in there, um, plus all this extra cutting here and here and there, so yeah, it just it's it's like an insanely hard, smooth finish. You know, like even that's not even worn. You can't even see like anything on it on the on the on the crank pin right there. So that's that's a good sign. But this is actually what I will, I wanted to figure out how many ports this thing actually had. So that is the. Hope you can see that in the camera. Make sure you're still in the frame. Okay. So that those are the exhaust ports right here. Yeah, it's nice and oily, oily. So the guy put some kind of after run oil in there. Um. But let's count them here real fast. We got one. Yeah, even that. They're all. <laughs> They're, they're all thing too. I mean, that's a lot of good work done here. Those are one, two, three, four, five, six, so it's a seven port. So it's a seven port engine. So from what I read, I mean, I'm not sure 100%, but usually it sounds like the higher ports are good for higher revving engines, and you want like the lower, like, like three port or five port for like the off road where you need more like low end torque. That kind of makes sense. It's the same way with like a car engine too, you know. You know, you need to do like a higher RPM engines need more air to breathe, but they suck at low RPM, you know. So it's a trade-off: torque or or power, high high rent or high RPM power. Yeah, look at all the extra crank, you know, all the sleeve work. So um, and it looks like it was done on a CNC machine. It doesn't look. I mean, it doesn't look like Dremel, you know. Like it's just too perfect. So this was probably done on a CNC machine. All right, looks pretty awesome. Pretty excited um, that I didn't get totally ripped off. Well, at least so far, I can't tell. Um, so that only gives me really a reason to take the carburetor off. Um, it's a composite carburetor, which I like. You know, um, you know, with, with a composite carburetor, you know, I'll take it off. Um, because I want to see if it's actually a, um, I just, I don't like, well, something I don't like taking it off because you can kind of, you can jack up the carburetor a little bit. Yeah, this guy has it stuck on there. I may have to take a little screw out. Some, some of you don't have to take the screw all the way out, but maybe this one you do. Not sure. Okay, yeah, I'm going to have to take the screw out 100% on this one. So what I'm looking for is, okay, so I didn't know, some, sometimes the newer carbs, they'll put composite here, and that's to, uh, wow, they want composite all the way into the throat here. But they'll do the composite to, um, they'll do that to reduce the heat transfer, because you don't want to transfer heat from the crank. It's the same thing as, exactly as a car engine, right? You know, heat soak, it's called heat soak, uh, uh, vapor lock. I made actually videos on vapor lock before. You know, where your fuel is actually boiling. So you want to prevent heat from coming in the block in the carburetor. And you don't want to heat or boil your fuel. Because colder fuel is actually denser. Alright. And more dense, more, bigger bigger charge. So. I'm fairly new to nitro engines, but I mean, I've been working on car engines for, for 30 years. Since I was a kid. Alright. Alright, cool engine. I'm pretty excited. Except the, the springs are different, so I might have to get some springs for those. Oh yeah, that's also tilt. I, I read about that too, that they, they, they tilt them down a little bit. See how this is tilted down a little bit? So instead of being like flat 90 degree from here to here, this exhaust port is tilted down a little bit. Alright, and that is this. I can see that these are ceramic bearings because I would, I've not seen uh, like a steel color here. Like normally, if these were steel, those those would be like shiny, like silver. And Swiss made bearings, so both sides Swiss made. Um, I can't tell in the front. I guess I could look up the part number, like what the front ones are. I mean, those could be ceramic too, so I don't know. Like I said, I can't find any specs on on the internet about this thing. So, um, like I said, their website doesn't have anything going on. So, nine millimeter Venturi, nice and smooth. All right, this thing's gonna haul ass. All right, so I'm gonna uh, get it back together and uh, I'm gonna start trying to get it in my car. All right, so here's what I'm picking out. So that's actually an RB Concepts uh, Italian-made C4, 
and I had actually powder coated it. So, but yeah, having it like this also gives you a lower center of gravity. So, I have to move over the uh, Sentex clutch and get that all set up, uh, shimmed in again. But actually, I'm, I'm going to design a uh, Sentex clutch tool. You can't even buy them; they're all out of stock. So, I, I wanted to buy like a clutch adjuster tool, but you couldn't. Buy, I can't buy them anywhere. So, um, I'm going to design a clutch spring tool. You know, 3D printed. Uh, I'm using 25% ink fill. Alright, so now I have to crank this thing down on my clutch. Alright, so my springs finally came in. So, um, with your traditional, like uh, most engines, you have that wraparound spring. But on the uh, Pico, you have the option to have the shorter spring, and that's actually what I opted for. Makes it a little bit cleaner, you know, you don't have so much stuff coming around here interfering with the carb. Okay, you need but, to get the Syntax clutch re shimmed in there. Yes, I did actually order some new shims. And got the throttle set up here. That's such a nice looking Venturi. It's a pretty big Venturi. You know, like with these high, these high RPM engines, 9, 9, 9 millimeter Venturi. With the high RPM engines, on-road engines, you can actually definitely go with the bigger Venturi for the smaller engine. On the off-road cars, I like the smaller Venturi because it gives you better throttle response. You know, more velocity, more air velocity. Alright. Alright, so I'm discharging my batteries up for my bump box. And uh, come back here when they're done and we'll... Hopefully this thing will work. Wire it up. Actually, I didn't even check the glow plug. It should be a turbo plug. I mean, this is a pretty high-end en engine. Oh, <laughs> next video. I got an air Pico. I'm addicted. <laughs> it's an off-road uh, 28 Pico. I'm going to take it apart and upgrade the uh, bearings of the ceramic. All right, let's get this thing fired up. So this is actually one of those high-end Italian engines. So, probably want to heat it up first, just to make sure that I'm not going to get some damage here. I'm going to prime some fuel. Finger on the exhaust. Actually, make sure you get this going first. Make sure this thing's actually running. If you can see it on the camera. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, let's try this out. Glow, nitro glow plug on. Should be prime. Let's go. Thank you.